Welcome. This is Emily K. Labou, CEO and founder of Labou Publishing Enterprise. Welcome back to another segment of the LPE Author Chat Series, where we are in the special anthology segment of the LPE Author Chat Series. So thank you so much for joining us again. So our special guest on this evening is Gladys Peaches Kinney. She is a licensed social worker both made a faith motivating coach, author, speaker, and cancer survivor. She graduated from the University of Maryland at Baltimore School of Social Work, earning her master's degree. With over 20 years of experience, she has unselfishly provided outreach and direct services to the community. Her faith in God is her driving force which compels her to help coach and serve others. She has been featured on radio stations and in magazines sharing her amazing journey of conquering cancer with a smile. She wrote about her battle with breast cancer in her first book, Stepping Out on Faith, Dare to Dream, a journal of faith and workbook. Astonishingly, it was published within 48 hours of her first surgery to remove breast cancer with the workbook completed just 30 days after. Wow. In addition, her third book, I Rise, Stories of Triumph, which is co-authored, was published in January 2019. What about that, folks? <laughs> you on a roll. So welcome, welcome to our show, the LPE Author Chat Series, Ms. Gladys Peaches Kenny. How are you? I am wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for having me, Kim, and Labu Publishing. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So you have written a chapter in Set Apart and Chosen, God Chooses Ordinary Women to Do Extraordinary Things. So first, before we get into your story, why don't you tell me what made you say yes to this project? Um, One, just your history of you've been writing, you actually inspired me like, I want to say either 10 to 12 years ago when wow. you called me to write. And every time I would see you at an event and you would say, you need to write, you need to write. At that point, I hadn't written. And then when I would see you, sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't written. But you just inspired me on the low and you admonished me at the same time because you kept going for it. Who I had procrastinated, but that's part of it because of your um your history of writing, your um consistency, and just your your success inspired me to go forward. So that's why. Wow. Well, thank you, and I'm glad I inspired you. I'm glad you jumped out there and started on your writing journey. So this is but your fourth book, right? It is. So this will be your fourth book. So it seems like to me that you have caught the writing bug. Yes. <laughs> so how had had you always wanted to be a writer though? Is this something that was new for you? Well, honestly, I can remember 1996, I, re I can recall receiving a prophetic word that I would be writing. And it honestly, I didn't put my hand to the uh, pen really until um, 2012. But once I caught it, I'm now I have it and I'm I'm going You're on a roll. <laughs> on a roll. So why don't you tell us your what's what's your chapter title in the book? Let's see. <clears throat> Broken side unmuted and speaking out on purpose. Broken silence and unmuted and speaking out with a purpose. Like yeah. that title is just striking in itself and it just demands attention, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. tell me a little bit about why you actually chose that title. Well, I just think it just all has just come together, like the initially stepping out on faith and now just really re recognizing that not only do I have the writing bug or, or, or anointing, but God has also anointed my voice and allowed me to recognize the power of my voice that I didn't realize as I was growing up as a child or into young adulthood. And mm -hmm. so now that I'm recognizing the power of speaking, the power of telling my truth and being authentic, whether um, in trying to avoid other people's opinions, but just being honest and speaking out mm -hmm. and it's just being unmute. Like I've been mute long enough. I can't hold back anymore. Awesome. Awesome. So in your book, talking about the power of words, you actually wrote, 
The power of words can elevate your existence or send you a fast ticket to your emotional death. With emotional death, you are physically alive, but your drive to fulfill your passion is faint. Too many times after hearing negative words, it was like a noose being wrapped around my neck, filling inner dreams of confidence. There were parts of my childhood and adulthood which made me afraid to speak out and to speak my truth. So tell me a little bit about um, how negative words have impacted your life. Well, negative words, I remember this, sticks and stones let me break your bones, but words can never hurt you. That's a lie. A bit of hell. That's a lie. Yeah, it's a lie. That's a lie. Um, the Bible says you can speak life or you can speak death. And eat, whichever one you speak, you're going to eat that fruit. And so um, being told negative things, even with the just the kids, you know, teasing, those mm -hmm. words and my love language is words, after words of action. So if somebody says something, it really cuts deep because mm -hmm. that's how, that's how, that's one of my ways of functioning. And so words are powerful. So, um, it word negative words can really have an impact is it. I mean, it's death. You can speak death into somebody's, um, emotional existence and they're just there, not present and, it just can kill a person's spirit. Yeah, absolutely. And and I've experienced that myself now. And, um, you know, I didn't know how real that was until it became a part of, you know, my story. Wow. And so those words do cut deep and they do have an impact um, and they can, they can seriously kill your spirit. And, yeah. you know, so if you continue to allow yourself to stay in that position, then um, you're hurting you're hurting for real. And yeah. I just didn't realize that before. And, and so I do believe that scripture, life and death is in the power of the tongue and it's very impactful. So you also talked a little bit about fear in your chapter as well. So you said fear is a dominating force that will either prompt you into action or freeze you into a statue. Mm -hmm. So being that, um, you had fear of speaking up and speaking out. What was it that changed for you and how did you overcome that? Um, one, definitely prayer, God's word and the Holy Ghost and taking his word and applying it because the word does really work. And when I have in a particular time in which in 2015 is when I feel like I felt like the the noose or noose was taken off my neck and the muzzle was taken off my mouth when I had to speak up on my, one of my jobs. Mm -hmm. And once I spoke up because initially I was dealing with some intimidation. Yes, I was still full of faith, but whenever I would approach somebody who had a either more dominant spirit, I would shrink back. But God said, no, enough is enough. And I had yeah. my truth. I spoken it with, um, Oh goodness, I can't even think. I I, I wasn't um disrespectful, but I spoke yeah. the truth with um power and conviction, and you had to have known that I was serious. And all my co colleagues were like, "Yes, glad is you know," because they called me glad. It was like, "Yes, I'm so proud of you." I was like, you know yeah. what? Ever since then, I just see. I feel like God just been open up the doors, and so when when you presented this project, I, you remember I asked you, I said, should I talk about that I found out I had more cancer or should I talk about coming off of mute? You said coming off of mute. Yeah. And I'm so glad that you told me to do that because as I was writing, it just, it was making more sense. I'm like, wow, like all these years holding yeah. back, all these years believing the lies, all these years thinking, I either wasn't good enough or if I spoke something, if they didn't like it, then their their opinion meant so much that it would dictate my future. No, that's a lie. And and so thank you. I, I'm so glad that um I just did this. And um I hope I get a chance to share another thing that helped me to finish my <laughs> to finish my chat because I got stuck, but had a conversation with one of my um, parents that I work with who calls me Big Sus, she, after having a conversation with her, she could identify with what I was, 
what I used to be. And mm-hmm. that let me know, this is it. This is where I need to go. And God has set this up for such a time as this. That's all I know. Amen. <laughs> so, so since you, you brought that up about, about getting stuck, there was a point when you got stuck. Tell us about what the writing journey has been like for you. So, um, what does that whole process look like for you? Like, is there a certain place you go to write? Is there a time you write? What do you do when you get stuck? Um, like you said, you just went and you talked to somebody. Do you have other, you know, mechanisms that you use to help you in the writing process? Well, I like to, I, I wrote one of my books on a train. Um, sometimes I like to go, like, even if I'm going to beach, mm-hmm. I love the water, being in a serene place. Sometimes God speaks to me early in the morning, like anywhere between three to five o'clock. A lot of ideas are downloaded. And so I write then. And I definitely can say I stay with a journal mm-hmm. now, sometimes a physical heart journal. And then sometimes I use my actual tablet. So those things help me. And when I got stuck talking it out or just mm-hmm. brainstorming and when God, God speaks in so many different ways. Yeah. that sometimes he'll put a thought in your mind or in your heart and that thought keeps just ringing. So I write it down. Mm-hmm. I write it down and I might date it and I'll come back to it because God operates. It seems like he operates sometimes like a jigsaw, zig, jigsaw puzzle. So he mm-hmm. doesn't give you all the pieces or you got yeah. 5,000 pieces and then you got three pieces. They fit, but the other ones don't. And you're yeah. like, trying to figure it out. So mm-hmm. those things help me um, being in a still quiet place. I can't write in a bunch of noise. I can't, I can't, nope. I need peace. Or if I'm dealing with some trouble moments, I may stop to write what even what I'm dealing with. So sometimes writing mm-hmm. the pain can be therapeutic for a person. Yes. Therapeutic for me. And I'm a licensed social worker, so I encourage the client. <laughs> Look, right, journal is powerful. It, it yeah. Is. So, yeah. It really is. It really is powerful. Um, you know, just recently I went back to some years past and read some of the things I had written in my journal and and it just blew me away to see where I was then and how far I've come. And it, it was just amazing to me. Like, wow, God, you did that. <laughs> You know, so so it can it can be that source of um, encouragement for you to be able to look back on your words, you know, and like you said, I always say that writing is healing. There is healing yeah. in writing. Yes. So it's definitely, you know, therapeutic, as you say. And so I try to encourage people to do that as well. So good. That, good job. Good. <laughs> So you talked about the uh, life changing. So, so one of your um, segments in your chapter is life changing, titled "Life Changing," and you said rededicating my heart and life to God was the pivotal decision that led to the tape coming off of my mouth. Mm. Talk about what that was like, because that's oh. like a moment, like that's something that happens, and it's like, like you said, it's, take the tape off. And you felt that, you lived that. So talk to us a little bit about that. Well, um, I guess the short the short answer to it, like I was raised in church, but at an early age, we stopped going. Puberty set in and <laughs> hot pants set out too. And But then I was losing my brother, led me to Christ, oh led me God. back to God. And I, I, I coined the thing of saying, my brother's death brought forth my life. Wow. And so just being bold in Jesus, because I was so happy that Jesus saved me despite of all the stuff I've done. Mm -hmm. Like if he can save me, he can save anybody. And I know some people may look at it. Oh, Gladys, you've always been good. You you didn't do nothing, but I know that I have. And I know that I I have some sin. I have sin, you know. And so I was just grateful. And so I was telling and just happy to tell everybody, but there were still other things that I held back. Mm -hmm. Um, The administration Mm -hmm. on my job, it just, that's when I felt like it broke. That's when I felt like that thing broke for real. And Mm -hmm. I am so... (laughs) Woo! I am so grateful because... 
I, I, I started talking to a guy who had an interest, and he said, girl, you talk too much. And I was like, okay. And so I was trying to be mindful, but then I was like, hold up. <laughs> what? I'm getting, God is calling me to speak out. Like, I'm not shrinking back. I've shrunk back no. enough. And um, you weren't for me anyway. But <laughs> so I, <laughs> I have to speak up and see the enemy will use, he doesn't care who he uses, whether True. it's family, your your church family, your 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 job. He doesn't matter, he doesn't care who he uses to try to send some, some discouragement from you to prevent you from walking in your purpose. Yeah. You walk in your purpose and you begin to, and you recognize, like, hold up, this the more I speak. The more I get healed, and if somebody else gets healed, like, no, I can't shut up. I'm going to have to get on. Uh -uh, no, let me get on. Sometimes now, I just get on Facebook or Instagram for just a few seconds just to say a drop a word of encouragement because I know when I speak, I'm speaking life. So Amen. if you're speaking life, you're going to help set somebody free. And God said, "Who he who um, wins souls is wise. So yeah is to help other people to recognize this joy that you can really be fulfilled in Christ. Um, that's, that's what I'm about, like sharing so somebody else can be set free and encouraged. Like God would use whoever you are for his glory. He really will. So I'm, go ahead, because now that I'm off mute, you, you're going to have to rain. <laughs> <it. laughs> I'm not going to meet you, baby. You go right on and testify. <laughs> Because just like you said, when you speak to life, you know, it changes other people. People get healed. So, you know, somebody out here, we have many viewers on here watching right now. So somebody needs to hear what you say. So I'm not trying to put you on me. <laughs> but it's funny because a part of what you said in the book was um, the freedoms of knowing who you are and who you belong to are powerful tools that unlock many doors. And so that just kind of speaks to what you just said, right? Because now, now, now you're, you're off mute, right? And it's God using you for his glory, really. Now that you're off mute, it's, he can use your voice. Yes. So that's extraordinary. Like, I, no, don't stop. Don't stop. That's right. You keep right on going, lady. Yes. yes. So, so tell me what advice would you have for, um, first of all, what advice would you have for somebody else that's living their life on mute? And then I'll ask you the next question. Well, I'm going to give this quick testimony when I mentioned about one of my parents. So mm -hmm. January, so my current job, I'm contractual at a school. And I asked my parent, and which I'd only been there for like maybe six to seven weeks, a short term. I said, why should they keep me? Why should they renew my contract? She said, Miss Kinney, because you believe in us. Miss Kinney, you see the best in us. Miss Kinney, you give us hope. Miss Kinney, because of you, she said, you are our voice that we thought we lost a long time ago. Wow. I was like, what? <laughs> what I, I do what I do because I know what it's like to be on mute. I know what it's like to feel, have that low self-esteem. I know what it's like when you feel like, why should I even live here? Why should I even exist? Let me take my own life because nobody cares or I'm yeah. broken right now. I know what it's like. I said, this is why I do what I do. So mm -hmm. I'm so, I said, I'm here for you. This is why I'm here for you. And I said, can I use that? I got to give this testimony and I've been sharing it yeah. ever since. And one of my other parents who, grandparents, she's 62. She said, Miss Kenny, you are amazing. Every time I'm around you, my spirit feels lifted up. Oh. He said, I got to get what you, it's something about you. And I, I want this, you need to, I need you to impart, impart into me what you have. And I'm like, she, and I received it, but I'm like, she's 62 and she is Don't 70. Matter. But I'm just like, to God, I thank you. And having that conversation with those ladies, that when I was stuck in the middle, I had the beginning of my book and the end. But yeah. I got stuck after I had a conversation. I finished and submitted my check. Yes. <laughs> but it had real substance to it and it made sense. And I was like, I can't be muted. I, devil, you, you, you know what? You had me long enough, but now it's over. Yes. We're divorced. 
completely officially <laughs> we're divorced i just want to let you know I, I love it a new boo and um, <laughs> i am no longer muted i will uh -uh, i want to speak and tell the world what god is doing and empower other people listen you might yeah. feel broken right now but do not give up do not throw in the towel I'm telling you, God will truly give you beauty for your ashes. He will turn your mourning into dancing. He will give you such a brand new life. You look nothing, nothing, nothing like where you started. Yes. Ooh, let me just, okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I wanted you to give that advice first, but now to my, to my original question, okay. what advice would you have to someone else that is considering writing, but they're, they just don't know if they can do it? What advice would you give to them? I would say write, write, mm -hmm. and just write, just write <laughs> on your heart, write what you're thinking about, write even the, 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 I don't know where to start. Just begin to write what's ever on your heart and yeah. all of it will come together. Your editor helps you formulate this stuff and make it make sense okay just write just write get the pen bam write <laughs> i love it i love it she even bought in props <laughs> all right so the most important piece is to tell those that are viewing that are here to support you where they can purchase uh, your, your copy of your book, Set Apart and Chosen, God Uses Ordinary Women to Do Extraordinary Things. At Faith Steps 8, F-A-I-T-H-S-T-E-P-S, -S -S, the number eight, um, dot com forward slash books. Okay. It's Faith Steps 8 dot com forward slash books. Awesome. Awesome. Because we want people to be able to pre-order the copy. Yes. We are winding down. I think we only have three days left in our pre-order campaign. So um, you still have some more gifts left or have you reached yes. your, your 25? No, I have a couple more. So people, okay. on, you better come on and get your books now. Pre-order. You said you wanted, you better come get it. <laughs> Yeah, that's because you will get a pre-order copy. You'll get the uh, autographed copy of her book and whatever that special gift is that she has for her audience. So hurry up. We only got three days left, guys. So thank you so much. I know the time goes so fast, but thank you so much for joining us uh, for this series of the LPE Author Chat. So um, are there any parting words that you have for our viewers? Yes, just three little words. Speak loud, speak up, and speak proud. All right? Share your voice because you have- Say it again. Voice. Say it again. Say it again. Okay. Speak loud, speak up, and speak proud. Share your voice because there's power within it. Amen. I love that. I love that. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment of the LPE Author Chat Series. This is our special anthology edition with the authors of Set Apart and Chosen, God Uses Ordinary Women to Do Extraordinary Things. Be sure to set your notifications to join us tomorrow for another amazing interview with another one of our authors. We look forward to seeing you. And as always, if you are so Someone who is considering writing your book, it's time. Visit us at www.laboopublishing.com. I can't wait to hear from you. Take care, be blessed, guys, and have a good night. Bye bye. bye, -bye.